Howdy again everyone. The Chinese Viltrox company have launched quite a number of good value autofocus lenses for various systems by now, but one has been oddly missing, a 50mm option. Now that's all changed with the new Filtrox 50mm AF f1.8 FE. It's currently just for Sony's mirrorless E-mount cameras, full frame or APS-C, although I'd be surprised if it doesn't make its way onto other systems too, eventually. It's more expensive than usual for a 50mm f1.8 lens, costing 380 US dollars, and I'd like to thank Filtrox for sending me a sample copy of the lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. A bright aperture 50mm lenses, blah blah blah, you all know what they can do by now, I'm sure you don't need me to explain a 50mm lens, they get beautiful pictures with a nice little emphasis on your subject, and at f1.8 you can enjoy some lovely out of focus backgrounds here, particularly if you're shooting on a full frame camera. This new lens in question has completely typical build quality for a Viltrox lens. The lens barrel is solid and metallic, feeling pretty tough, with a nice brushed finish to it. The lens mount is also made of metal, as you can see, and although there's no weather sealing gasket here, there is a USB-C port for future firmware updates, and Viltrox have a good reputation for keeping their lenses updated. Next, there comes a metallic aperture ring, which turns around without clicks except to get into auto mode. It turns with just enough resistance to stop you accidentally changing aperture. I'd prefer a mechanism with clicks myself, although the smooth aperture change looks very nice when shooting video, which is important for some users. The autofocus motor works silently and accurately, but at a rather slow speed. Something video makers tend to be concerned about is focus breathing. This lens doesn't display too much of it, as you can see here, but you do see a fair bit of warping in the corners of the image as you change focus, which can be distracting. I've noticed this before on Viltrox's 35mm lens. The lens's filter size is a fairly small 55mm, and it comes with a decently sized plastic hood, and that hood can be reverse mounted. The lens does not have image stabilization. Overall, in terms of build quality, it's a nice package, which feels tough and lovely to handle, although its autofocus really could be a little bit quicker. Alright, let's take a look at image quality now. I'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. In the middle of the image, we see fairly good sharpness and contrast, although a little purple fringing can be seen here too. Over in the corners, we see reasonable sharpness, although there is some noticeable ghosting on contrasting edges. Stop down to f2.8, and there's just a slight improvement in the image corners. However, image quality back in the middle is now excellent. Stop down to f4 for perfection in the middle of the images. Over in the corners, contrast has improved, and they look pretty sharp now. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 for further slight improvements in sharpness. The lens stays this sharp down to about f16, where softness emerges due to the effect of diffraction. Overall, the lens is decently sharp, just a little bit better than most cheap 50mm lenses out there. Alright, let's look at how it works on an APS-C camera now. My little Sony A5100 with its challenging 24 megapixel sensor. At f1.8, sharpness and contrast are still good in the middle of the image, although that purple fringing is more noticeable. The corners again look softer, but they're not too disastrous here, more ghostly than anything else. At f2.8, the corner image quality just sees a little extra contrast here, although back in the middle, picture quality has quickly become excellent. F4 looks perfect in the middle, and image quality in the corners sees a nice boost, now looking excellent. The lens stays this sharp down to about f11, where the effects of diffraction are just beginning to affect your images again. Overall, the lens is a little sharper on an APS-C camera, but watch out for that purple fringing at f1.8. Alright, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at the lens's native vignetting and distortion. The lens, as you can see, projects some moderate pincushion distortion, and the corners are quite dark at f1.8, as you'd expect to see. At f2.8 and f4, they brighten up quite a lot though, so it's an average performance here, a bit more distortion than I'd like to see, really. The lens can focus down only to 55cm, that is a bit further away than usual, making it difficult to shoot smaller subjects. 
At f1.8, close-up image quality remains pretty sharp, although contrast is low. Stop down to f2.8 and that contrast returns. Let's take a look at how the lens works against bright lights now. It's a fairly good performance, flaring is low and contrast remains good, although there is an annoying flash of glaring when lights are right on the edge of your image. And while we're working in the dark, let's look at this lens's coma smearing. At f1.8, it's lower than usual for an inexpensive 50mm lens, although some colourful fringing can be seen. Stop down to f2.8 and it goes away. Let's zoom out and take a look for sun stars. Well, forget about them. Even if you stop down to f16, sun stars don't really happen with this lens. Next, let's take a look at Bokeh. Cheap 50mm lenses tend to have rather edgy looking out-of-focus backgrounds. However, this Viltrox lens does very well, and your out-of-focus areas will always look nice and smooth, albeit with a cat's eye shape to Bokeh balls in the image corners at the brightest apertures. And finally, related to Bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.8, there's some colourful highlighting to be seen before and after the plane of focus here, f2.8 and f4 look progressively better. Ok then, overall, compared to a standard cheap ass 50mm f1.8 lens, the Viltrox is a slightly mixed bag although it does have some clear advantages. It's just a little bit sharper than usual, and it has very nice metallic build quality, its bokeh is smoother than usual, and it doesn't flare as much as cheaper 50mm lenses, and it has a bit less coma as well. But I was a little annoyed by its slightly slow autofocus, its pincushion distortion, and its long minimum focus distance, which is a particular no-no for me. Overall, the lens is a little better than the usual crowd of cheap 50mm f1.8 optics out there. It's up to you whether the sum of those advantages make it worth the extra money you have to pay, but it is good enough for me to generally recommend. Thanks for watching everyone, I do hope you find these reviews helpful, I enjoy putting them together, although they're quite a lot of work. If you'd like to support this channel to keep these reviews trucking on, then take a look at my Patreon page, there's a link in the description below, and supporters over there get all kinds of exclusive content. Ciao for now.